words are becoming more synonymous every day. And if you think your sexual escapades are far away from the click of a mouse, think again. In a trend that seems to be becoming more popular, guys are taping their one night stands without the other person knowing and then posting it all online for the world to see. This is a control thing and it's a conquest thing. Diane Strausser is a counselor and the founder of Successful Relationships in Bexley. I think a person who would videotape a one night stand and then put it on the internet for everybody to see is basically a narcissistic person who's not doing this because of any kind of sexual desire. Even if you're not on the prowl for one night stands, random hookups are happening all around you. Offering no strings attached, fun in New Albany, 4 p.m. today. You must be five foot four or taller, Westerville Sunday. Man seeking woman, 28 years old in Victorian Village. Set up a time to meet. Craigslist can be a hub for people looking for a good time. But it doesn't always end up that way, especially when the person is doing a very private thing that could become very public. It's terrible, like having complete control taken away from you. Helene Holstein with the OSU group Women and Allies Rising in Resistance says she believes such an act is criminal. Without consent, it's like that, you know, it's a rape. Just this summer, a Sarasota, Florida man was charged with video voyeurism for taping a night of sex back in 2008. <laughs> the group says pop culture is playing its part in making hidden camera tapes look sexy and funny like this scene from American Pie. It may be also happening more often because you're also seeing that people aren't being punished for it. Adding insult to injury, it may not even be a crime here in Central Ohio. The Columbus Prosecutor's Office says they would have a hard time proving the other person didn't really know about the camera. So most likely, they would not file any charges. Don't feel like it was your fault. She believes some people are probably just too embarrassed to even bring it up. Moral of the story, one night stands are probably really bad for you. Adam Slinger, ABC6 on your side. The crime? That's not right. Baffling every person who uses the library. I don't know why somebody would actually steal from a public library. But they did. $1,500 worth of books, DVDs, and CDs. The man and woman checked out the materials from two libraries. This one here, the North Side branch. And they checked out books from here at the Whetstone Library. This is for library card number. Kim Snell with the Columbus Metropolitan Library says the two had library cards in seven different names. And uh, it was someone's married name, their uh, maiden name, as well as the names of their children. Once they had the material, they sold the books to half price books. It was this store on Lane Avenue that contacted the library. We were able to get some of those materials back, but unfortunately they were vandalized, so they can't be circulated. The thieves had blacked out all of the library markings and ripped off the library tags. It really is a shame that uh, people are going to this kind of length to make extra money to actually steal from the library, and when they do that, they're stealing from the taxpayers. The thieves' library cards have been canceled and just in the nick of time, because one of them tried to check out books again today. An alleged burglary at Easton turns into this. <laughs> Police cars, helicopters, canine units, and the bike patrol. And there was mass chaos with all kinds of police cars, helicopter, and everything going on. All looking for a man who escaped police custody inside police headquarters in downtown Columbus. He ran out of police headquarters barefoot in handcuffs. One witness told police that the guy ran into the Levesque Tower. And another witness saw him run into a parking garage. Then the suspect runs right past us with only shorts and handcuffs on down North Wall Street. Call the police. I'm calling 911 and Ernie, my photographer, is chasing after him with his camera. Thank you. Yes, sir. The guy runs across the state house lawn. You see one of the troopers going after him. Minutes later, he's on the ground, cuffed. Hey, they did this to me. They hit me. They hit me. And in the back of a wagon, not only facing a burglary charge for stealing a wallet filled with credit cards, but now he's looking at escape, too. <laughs> The search for Kendrick Wilkerson settles down. While we are on North Wall Street, the 18-year-old runs by. Hey, this is 
is Mary Jellica with Channel 6. I see that escaped teenager running down Wall Street. I'm on the phone with dispatchers, and Ernie Hall, my photographer, is running after him. He just ran down Wall Street and up one of the alleys. My photographer is actually chasing him with a camera. I know. I'm like, where did y'all come from? He was like, hey, buddy. In a jailhouse interview, Kendrick says he saw us. I wanted to stop, but I didn't. He was like, no, thank God the camera here, so I'm running. The camera, as long as I had y'all right there, I was good as gold. The 18-year-old says he bolted out of police headquarters because he was scared and he didn't want the police to hit him again. I was inside the garage, and um, and the garage door, the garage door was closed, and it's a little door on the side. And I pushed the door open, and that's where I left. Was it just like just a couple of seconds? You were like, it's now or never. Yeah. I was nervous. My general was pumping real and I was just so scared. Kendrick says he hid in a trash can and in the Levesque Towers before taking off again. I wanted to go home. But didn't make it that far. They tackled me and they was trying to like quit resisting, quit resisting. I'm, with, I'm in cuffs. How can I resist? I'm like, they was trying to do something and Ernie came up like this and said, they said, stop, stop, here the cameraman. That's why Kendrick says he was glad we were there. He knows he's in trouble and has this to say. I'm sorry and I really need help that I, I don't need, I don't want to go through this no more. I'm tired of putting my, my family through this. He says he's been in and out of jail since he was 14 and this is hopefully the last time. Paintballs, usually the only thing flying around this barn in Morrill, Ohio. But Saturday night, real bullets were fired here. It was very upsetting. Todd Sims and his family away in Toledo for the day. We checked on the animals about 11 a.m. When they came back, a heartbreaking discovery. Their pet donkey lying dead in its pen. We kind of looked the animal over, and sure enough, there was a, a bullet uh, hole in the rear of the animal. And Shell casings found near the road. The sheriff's office says it looks like a drive-by shooting. I, I haven't heard of stuff like that. In the light of day, Sims found his barn filled with bullet holes. It kind of put a little fear in us as a family because we spend a lot of time down here uh, working with the animals. In fact, one of, one of the bullet holes goes through the barn and, and one of the exact locations where we stand and work with the animals. The Sims family attached to that donkey, which had been their pet for 12 years. Todd still remembers when he bought the animal. It happened to be about the time that my uh, my wife and I's anniversary was going on and I just joked that day. I said, well, I got you your anniversary present. He's not laughing tonight, but Sim says he doesn't want revenge against the shooter. I, I would just like the common courtesy of them to kind of come forward and, and apologize. During halftime, there's plenty to do. You can play euchre or go all in in a game of poker or test your luck at slots. It's a jackpot of fun.